Citrus scientists in South Texas are discovering that a new method of grove establishment is showing remarkable benefits for growers. This novel planting design was initially created to help manage the devastating effects of a destructive invasive insect pest in Texas groves, the diapreppes root weevil. After several years of study, scientists were successful in their efforts to effectively control this deadly root weevil by deploying a plastic mesh as a barrier to break the life cycle of the root weevil. The plastic mesh prevents larvae from establishing themselves in the root zone and it stops new adults from emerging from the ground. This physical barrier dramatically reduces tree damage from diapreppes root weevil, it enhances tree health, and increases fruit production in diapreppes infested areas. Within a year or two, groves infested with diapreppes were free of this invasive pest. But scientists soon discovered that beyond effectively controlling root weevils, using plastic mesh under the tree canopy to the drip line of trees has tremendous benefits on the tree growth and overall grove health. They decided to establish new groves with this woven plastic mesh to ensure that the mesh holds onto the ground and does not get covered with soil, they decided to build raised beds covered with plastic before planting young citrus trees. This combination of raised bed with black plastic mesh as ground cover is a new planting design that growers can use to achieve other important benefits including increased tree density per acre decreased root weevil infestation, and subsequently reduced incidence of Phytophthora, enhanced root system and faster tree growth, reduced water evaporation from the tree root zone, a reduction in the need for irrigation, thus accumulating substantial water savings, soil conservation due to reduced erosion, reduced herbicide use for weed and vine control and eliminating any negative effects of herbicides on tree growth, and finally overall healthier trees that grow much faster and produce fruit sooner. Dr. Mamadou Setemu, an entomologist at the Texas A&M Kingsville Citrus Center at Westlaco, said all those advantages mean a grower can actually save money while enjoying healthier, more productive trees. Our study shows that grower can uh, recover the investment for making the bed and for buying the plastic mulch in two to three years. The saving in water and herbicides used for the first two to three years will suffice to cover this initial investment. Also, grower will see benefit of this new planting design for many years to come. We get five year warranty on the plastic and I can tell you we have some demonstration sites put in place in 2010 and 2012 where the plastic is still intact, showing that the plastic is good for many years. As citrus trees grow, they continuously provide shading to the plastic which is no longer exposed to direct sunlight, thus prolonging its longevity. Root weevils didn't pose a serious problem to citrus production in the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas until the year 2000, when the area's first case of diapreppes root weevil was documented in a dooryard citrus tree in McAllen. A quarantine area was enacted to confine this invasive pest and to prevent its spread. But by 2008, the diapreppes root weevil was documented 40 miles away in Bayview, Texas, meaning that either a new introduction or spread had occurred. But regardless of what had happened, the entire citrus production region of South Texas was very much at risk. Dr. Olufemi Alibi, a plant pathologist at the Texas A&M AgriLife Research and Extension Center at Westlaco, said growers and researchers were now confronted with a turning point in management of diapreppes. Obviously, 
efforts to contain their purpose to that single location in McAllen failed or was not working. To make matters worse, a separate find was found in the Bayview area. So at this point, growers and researchers were confronted with the question, do we continue spraying against the apripies, or do we find another way to contain it? Fortunately, research soon began on finding a novel, non-chemical method for managing diapreppies. Scientists set about to interrupt the life cycle of the diapreppies root weevil, which eventually led to the new planting method. We were looking at ways to reduce the damage of root weevil by disrupting the life cycle in the growth. We knew that if we had a short of that, we will eliminate the apropis root weevil in the growth and also other root weevil as well. The life of a diapropis root weevil begins when a female weevil lays an egg on new tender leaf shoots of a citrus tree. Adult diapropis begin feeding on young, expanding leaves. After feeding on that tender new leaf growth and causing its initial damage to the tree foliage, the diapropis larvae drops to the ground, burrows a few feet into the soil, and begins to feed on the tree's root system. In sufficient numbers, feeding on a tree's root system can cause severe tree damage and eventual tree collapse. Once the larvae mature to adults, they emerge from the soil and climb the trunk back into the tree canopy seeking tender new leaves on which to lay eggs. And the process starts all over again. We tested several material to be laid as a barrier on the soil, but we found a lot of success with the black plexi mesh that we laid from one end of the drip line to the other end. And within two years, we were able to eradicate our prepis in those groves. And uh, ultimately, this is what we selected for the new planting design. And this material was also effective against all the root weevil. But as time passed, scientists realized that because of flood irrigation, rain, and wind, the mesh was soon covered with soil, which was an issue because it eventually defeats most of the benefits of using the ground cover. To avoid soil buildup on the mesh, we came up with a configuration of raised bed that is 10 foot wide at the base, 8 foot wide at the top, and 12 to 18 inches high, depending on the preference of growers. A mesh is now laid on top of this bed to serve as barrier to root weevils. But as the trees on the covered raised beds began to grow, scientists discovered several new and unexpected major advantages. The first advantage of the black plastic mulch was to break the life cycle of all the root weevil, not just the apropis. Then we noticed in the new planting design, because we raised the bed that the ground was loose, the root system of the tree established itself faster and the tree grew faster. The mesh also reduced the need to irrigate from every three weeks to every four to five weeks. The mesh protects the soil from evaporation by shielding it from direct impacts of wind and sun, thus helping preserve moisture. The mesh also prevented weeds from growing and competing with citrus for water and nutrients. So with this mesh, there is no need to control for weeds under the canopy. Because soil temperatures are higher under the mesh in the root zone, faster tree growth was documented. Faster tree growth translates to accelerated maturity. By our estimation, the time it takes from when you plant to when the tree starts bearing is reduced by about a year using this new planting design. This is very important because citrus growers get returns much faster and this helps to outpace the ravages of citrus greening disease. In recognition of these potential benefits, the scientists partnered with the Texas Citrus Pest and Disease Management Corporation to obtain grant funds from the USDA's Wong Long Bing Multi-Agency Coordination Program. These funds support an ongoing grower participatory project with the goal of field testing the novel citrus planting design coupled with aggressive psyllid control and HLB inoculum reduction strategies to ensure sustainability of the citrus industry in Texas. 
The raised bed also helps protect trees from damage to their trunks by farming equipment, wounds that serve as an entry point for Phytophthora. This novel planting design is a net advantage for citrus producers. It saves time, it saves money, makes for a better and faster growing tree, and even planted at higher density, can be implemented with a lower tree replacement rate, as trees do not die as much. Trees that do die can be more easily replaced because growers can do so at any time of year, even during the hottest months because the root system is better protected from drought and desiccation during the warmer months. And while it hasn't yet been documented, raised covered beds may also provide increased freeze protection because they increase soil temperatures by 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit. That temperature difference is more pronounced in winter. But what does all this cost? Cost could vary. It costs approximately $1,000 per acre to install the raised bed and uh, implement the strategy. $200 for making the bed, $800 for buying the plastic mulch and installing it. But by our estimation, the system will pay itself off in uh, two to three years in terms of water saving, saving for herbicide use, and quick production that lead to quick return. A local business, Newhouse and Company in Westlaco, has developed a new implement to create raised beds and lay down the plastic mesh. The tractor is guided by GPS technology, resulting in straight lines throughout an orchard. We currently have a raised cover bed system at eight grower locations in South Texas. Approximately 100 acres of this new planting design are being tested, and all our growers are reporting favorable results on tree growth, water, and herbicide savings. When we installed the ground cover in a planting of roughly 150 acres, the subject area is about five acres, and it was part of a larger irrigation system. So that when we watered the covered and the uncovered, everything got the same amount of water. After a couple of months, we noticed that the ground cover area was being waterlogged to the extent that we had eventually to get a contractor in to make a bypass around the covered area in order to uh, prevent waterlogging. So I have had moisture probes installed on the two different treatments and uh, we're just now having the area separated so we can get readings as to how much the water savings might be. But I suspect they're substantial, maybe in the range of 30% or more. I think that it's pretty obvious that there is an advantage in terms of weed control. Normally during a year, a bare ground weed control program would cost you from 125 to maybe $200 an acre, depending on soil type rainfall, the products you use, how much manpower you have, and those other variables. But with the ground cover installed, the weed control is basically 95 to 98% with no other labor or materials. The project is a classic demonstration of how scientists, the industry, and relevant government agencies partner together to develop and implement programs for the benefit of growers.